What's up guys, Gary with Diesel Fuel Network. In this video, this thing finally goes down the road with the new setup. Didn't exactly go as I planned. Stay with me till the end, you don't wanna miss it. All right, it's ridiculously hot out. I wanna work in this leaky hole in the roof carport garage thing, so. Okay guys, time for a voiceover to fill you in on the missing context here. So I realized when I was editing this video, I never really said anything about the backstory of this car. So this 1976 Camaro used to belong to my father. He's no longer with us now. But he actually owned this car since 1980. And all growing up, it was always a hot rod. I just always remember there was a, a loud hot rod engine in it. It had Lakewood ladder bars under the back. It always had big tires and little tires in the front, you know. Always basically a drag style car. But over the years, it just sat outside in the grass and it rotted out underneath. And in order to fix it, rather than just put it back to stock, he ended up just starting to do a back half on it. And it's never been finished, but it will be someday. It's a vehicle that I'm never going to get rid of. Let's see if I can. I actually I have a new master cylinder to put on this. And I don't have... I went to AutoZone and I can't even find the appropriate line to go to here just to get a short line so I can, uh, you know, bench bleed the master cylinder. Uh, but I just topped off the front section and got a little bit of juice coming out of my brake calipers. Everything else is new. All the brake lines and the calipers and everything is new on this. But for whatever reason, I think the master is bad. Or it could be the proportioning valve, but... I was able to get some pressure, some juice coming out of the front. So I think I got enough brakes just to be able all I want to do is back it out and stop it right there um just so I can you know be able to pull it in and out and be able to work in here on whatever I need to work on whether it's the tractor or the car or whatever uh it's shady and cool in here so I do want to be able to make this work so let's uh I had this thing boiling up the battery going for a while, so well, actually not even that long, but it's at twelve seven five now, so I'm wondering if it'll go. Um, I was thinking I really should pour some juice down the carbs to get it to get it to just fire up, so I'm not fighting this battery, but I'm thinking I might just try it.
to like, go through those carbs or something. My eyes are burning. And now, you must know that that is, I think the maybe second time in my life I've ever driven that car. Man, that feels amazing that it just moved out of there. What a beauty. Looks so much different sitting out here. Oy, oy, oy. Rusty but trusty. All right. place to work on this thing if it rains well it kind of rains in there too but uh, a little bit of shade from the sun now the sun's in the clouds okie jokey go for the wide angle lens it looks like you got a whole bunch of room in here it's not bad though it's actually great that car has been in here for years. I think the, I don't even know. I think the last time that car came out of here was gotta be five years ago, maybe four years ago. Now, probably five years ago. And what a feeling to have that thing move and even have a little bit of brakes out of it. I didn't get that new master cylinder on yet, but I was able to get some action out of the front brakes. So what we're gonna do here, and you're gonna already be like hey I, didn't, I don't remember seeing you get that thing running and driving that was like not done yet well I kind of skipped ahead a little bit um, so I didn't really totally finish the job I mean I, I zip tied the battery right here which this is where I'm gonna end up putting the battery uh, I'm gonna make some sort of a stay bracket that'll go around that or off of that uh, but for now I just zip tied it the uh, tank as well <laughs> I just zip tied the gas tank and I do need to get a different gas tank altogether just because this one leaks really bad it leaks from the middle like how it's actually two pieces put together at the seam and it leaks in the middle and uh, I need to figure out exactly what I'm gonna get there but what you did not see is well actually I did some of the filming of it I guess was the seat bracket seat mount which, I don't know if you can really see up under there. I still got to take it apart and paint all this too. But a couple of flat bars coming across there to mount to the bottom. And I was basically half done back here. I got that flat bar in there or whatever. That was actually a repurposed piece from something else. Um, and I'll, it's got one more bolt, but it really is like 
really solid. It doesn't really need it. Yeah, hear that car go by every day, BMW. The, uh, so what we're gonna do now, besides possibly take this thing up the road for a rip, is I wanna get this exhaust back together. So I got a couple of new flex pipes there, and I, depending on how long they are, yeah, actually almost 100%. I'm gonna think I'm gonna take this. So this is actually, so what this is, is the chrome bits that you see, so this elbow, that piece, and the tailpipe are actually Harley Davidson exhaust pipes. Uh, this would be like an aftermarket drag pipe for a Harley. And that is, that there I think would be from like a Vance and Hines system. Because normally the drag pipes are one piece. They would just go right to the engine and, and out. That there, so that actually I think is from, I can't remember, I think that's from the drag pipe. In fact, that very piece may be what was cut off at the end of that. And then that is just a random sort of, uh, like, actually that's approximately the back part of, of the Vance and Hines, I think. But as you can see, that is the original bracket that would hold it on the motorcycle and it's bolted right to the frame but now that i've extended the vehicle quite a bit now that she's extended i think what i'm going to do is because this used to be basically even that amount of pipe and that amount of pipe and that gives you an idea how much it's it's extended i think i'm going to take and actually mount that probably have to drill a couple of new holes I'll just mount that a little bit further back so that way I have even distance between the pipes and probably just use those pipes pretty much as is. I don't know if I'll, I might have to shorten them, but uh, so what I actually did before is I just used one of those pipes. That is a so the exhaust is one and three quarter and this is 18 inches, I believe. And I just cut that in half. I cut the 18 inch pipe in half and was able to use it on both ends. So that gives you an idea how much longer we are now. Uh, and another thing is, I will have to admit, I did drive it once already. Um, that was not documented on video, unfortunately. Sorry about that. But it was just a quick jaunt up the driveway a couple times and wasn't anything too special it was a really actually i will say this it could have been a pretty entertaining video because in the effort to save my hat from flying off i knocked the glasses off my face ran them over had to stop with no brakes put it up against the wall over there and then go recover my glasses luckily i was able to bend them back into position they weren't damaged permanently and uh, uh all was well but this thing is incredible to drive now and shortly after we get this exhaust completed i think we might take it up the road and it still needs more work i mean we're not done with it yet i do still like i said want to do a battery mount fuel tank mount get a different fuel tank complete the seat mount i want to leave this as it is as far as the paintwork goes but i do want to at some point strip it down to where I can actually paint the chassis. Because especially now that I've done all the welding and everything's like bare under there, it's all rusting already uh, from sitting outside, of course. So I do wanna go ahead and, and actually at some point paint everything but the body. Uh, and I also, also at some point I wanna redo these Zeus fasteners. So that'll be uh, another project as well. Although that, that's pretty simple because really you just need to replace this part of the Zeus fastener, not the, actually the other side on the other one is messed up too but all right i just had hose clamps on there let's see if we can get that loose i'm thinking that pipe's going to be pretty stuck on there the old original the old pipe from back here that rotted off it was still a real pain getting it off of there um and then on this side that clamp will hold it on i guess yeah so i had one proper clamp and just two hose clamps but it worked because it fits pretty good so yeah booed There she 
Oh, okay, they're just lock nuts. Or, I'm um, sorry, uh, regular nuts with lock washers. pipe was pretty rotted it just busted up mm, that's gonna be a real pain to get off of there too let me cut that right off there and then I'll try to you know what no that's not gonna come off very easily See the uh, collector of the header there. And then that's just slipped on there. So let's go ahead and get that pipe off of there. You know what? 18 inches is a lot longer than I thought. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm just going to leave the exhaust, the middle pipe, right where it was. And just let that take up the difference. It really doesn't matter. I mean, that's pretty decent. You know, it's, it's you want it to be able to flex anyway. And frankly, the longer it is, you know, because this chassis is going to have a lot of flex to it. And uh, the longer it is, the better, I guess. So it might not look as good just having the short. So actually, I'm going to have to cut. I'll have to cut the other one down to be to go there. But uh, that one, yeah, let's see what we can do. <sighs> All right, so I decided I'm going to cut both of these shorter and actually re-drill the holes and put the, the other piece in the middle uh, because it just doesn't look right having it with a really long flex pipe at the back and a really short one in the front, there's no re reason to have it like that. So let's try and dial in a couple of new holes here. Uh, about there maybe. so I can move it around a little bit. So let's see here. Figure out about where that's going to be cut. Uh, let me get a marker. because I don't know exactly how that's going to have to bend on there. So if I have to cut it shorter, I will. doesn't look quite as good as it did before, before it was all rusty and the other setup when it was shorter. It's a lot more flex pipe than I'd like, but it'll work for now. Uh, looks kind of funny, but it'll work. Now, let's see if we can 
put some proper clampage action on here. I don't know why I didn't have one before. I had something else. Okay, I'll put that down. It's that hose clamp. Obviously got to think about the tire clearance too. But as long as that's in, So that's beautiful right there. Maybe I did hose clamps because it looked better. I think that was why. I'm still going to probably do them here. I think maybe also because I don't think the regular clamps will fit here. Oh man, it just hits. all that time so there we go that'll be as good as it's gonna get rarely go they'll go all the way to full lock anyway all right awesome yeah that kind of looks like crap doesn't it i mean it worked fine all that time with a regular hose clamp I'm just not that into it. Uh, yeah, there it is. Oh yeah, that is flexing it. Now wait a minute, is that flexing it crooked? Hard to tell. Looks crooked from the tire, but the tire, yeah, I guess it is kind of crooked now. Oh, I don't know. You got a proper motorcycle clamp and a regular exhaust clamp that came with the flex pipe. Actually, so I ended up drilling those two holes and moving that back, but then I could not get that pipe on at that extreme angle. So I just drilled another hole because it was in that hole and that hole. So I just drilled one hole here and put it there. So. Now I'm really annoyed because that just like continues to look crooked. I'm wondering if the axle on this. What do we got here? That's a little loose. That's that's not to be loose. Gonna have a little bit of play there. All right. All right, here we go. First time in a while since that exhaust has been hooked up properly. Let's do it. Oh. Now I just want to get that, uh, get the old brake lever connected back up to the transaxle. 
That way I have some kind of ability to stop, especially if the belt comes off. Because if the belt comes off, there is no stopping. I mean, it's like a soap... If the belt comes off, it's like a soapbox derby car. The thing is just out of control and will not stop unless you put it into the bushes or something. So I'm going to put that lever back on the transaxle and uh, we'll take it up the road. What kind of shot does that look like? Ah, oh shit! I'm like or anything, but let's try it. Whew! All right, gotta make it down the driveway real, real slow though. All right, first maiden voyage up the road with the new setup. I don't know how that's gonna work out right there, and I'm really hoping it doesn't just go flying off. Fact. It's about to come off already, but this side only. Let me see if I can get it to work better. It's hard because the hood's got like rust on it. All right, I think that might work. Seems to be fairly solid until it isn't. Wait, is it not already? Oh, what the heck? Hope that's not a cop. That definitely sounded like a cop horn. You know, I'm on a farm tractor, right? I need an orange triangle, though. It's really hard to go slow. There we go. It's like puddles and puddles. Come on, come on. the belt is caught up on something. Ah, oh, crap, it is. Frickin' belt is stuck on the belt guard up here. Uh, next thing we gotta do is belt guards, because... Oh, I'm getting a frickin' ow. Ooh. Oh, now I'm getting a Charlie horse in my foot. All right, let's try it again. <sighs> try not to hit the clutch too far because I think that's what happened. It jumped off.
that severely bent axle is now way worse because this wheel is so hard and direct that it's like bump, 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 bump. Now one thing I could do is just let some air out of it. Um, I do want to check this belt again because it already sounds, yeah, something's wrong with this belt. This has too much air. So it's actually worse. I made it worse. <sighs> Somehow I made it worse instead of better. <laughs> uh, belt slips like hell. Wheels wobbling all over the place. Like the bent axle? <laughs> I don't know if you notice, you got a cell phone on your head. You got you got a board? Oh, I'll just bag it up. Alright, hey, come on. Oh, gotta remember. I reversed the pattern on the shifter because normally they go forward to shift up. Yep. So I did a whole custom setup where it goes backwards, but I gotta keep getting remembering that it's the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. I'm going home anyway, so. Yeah.
And that was my friend Ryan, uh, also owner of Automotive Ingenuity HD, the best diesel shop in the Northeast. They do just about everything over there. General repairs, diesel fleet maintenance, custom modifications, undercoating, you name it. Cars, trucks, they work on it all. Go check them out. again. I keep forgetting which direction the damn shifter goes because I changed it. The belt, uh, the belt is slipping like crazy. All right, well, that was uh, not the greatest test drive. Too many problems. But we'll get them addressed. So, like I said, this axle is bent like hell. And it wasn't such a big deal before with the other tire on there. I don't know, somehow that bigger, fatter tire just damped the fact that it was bent but now with this thing it's like really pronounced and it's jumping up and down kind of can get past it once you get a certain speed actually but it will also likely break and snap right off with the wheel and all at higher speeds from the vibration so that is not drivable right now we got to address that immediately the belt slipping is one of the main issues and it doesn't handle properly <laughs> oh you know what i wonder if the alignment's out of it because i don't even know where the toe is but um mainly it's you know what it is you know what i gotta check my trans mount because i didn't really weld that very good up to the chassis and i was wondering if maybe that actually was my issue no it feels like we're solid connection to the frame still so I don't think that's the issue. Yeah, that's still all solid. So I don't know. I don't know. Seems to be... Uh... I don't know. <laughs> so I guess we'll have to get a different... Well, you know what? I don't know about the belt. Ooh. Man, that thing loosened up like crazy. I don't know why. Oh, you know one thing, though? I never did. Now that I think about it. Oh, no, there's a key in there. So I was going to say, I don't think I ever tightened the set screws on the pulley, but... How hot is that? But actually, I, I it doesn't matter because it's keyed. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just... It's just slipping like crazy because... Maybe it uh it broke in and it's just too it's too long. So that's a it is really long too. So that's a 107 and I wanted a 106 but I couldn't find a 106. So I wonder if that 105.8 that I found would work or like I was thinking of before I'll put a an idler in it, an extra idler. Yeah, maybe we'll try that. Because at the very least, if I put an idler on it and it's not going to work, well, then I could just get a shorter belt and just go from there. All right, well, this was probably a long episode. But 
two things have now moved under their own power uh, today. This, which is still in need of some attention. I don't like the way this thing... Well, I don't know what I'm going to do about this rear axle because the only way to fix that is to take the whole transaxle apart and replace the axle. Then I'll have to extend the axle. I don't think I even have an axle. Um, I do have another thought, though, which I was thinking of. I have another thought, but it's kind of like going beyond where we're at. Like, almost considering all of this just pointless, not even... So I have that go-kart over there, and I got the straight axle that's on it, and... If I take the straight axle set up off the go-kart, have the transaxle still on here, and have it, um, you know, have the transaxle still operating, and then have a chain drive off of the axle to the straight axle, then we have a guaranteed non-bent axle. These are notorious for bending axles. Obviously, because it's so long when it's extended, that is, you know, that's the issue, but... Uh, could be prevented if it had like a bearing support on the outside, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. Well, let me I can tell you this. Look forward to the the rev limiter video. If you guys are new, I have a. It's not hooked up right now, but I I've created a custom rev limiter. Wouldn't call it a two-step. I mean, it could be used as a two-step, but it's a it's one set it and forget it rev limiter. You know, set it to whatever rev you want it to hit at, and uh, it just using a old auto meter tack mounted right up in there and a relay. It's actually kind of hooked up right now, but I just don't have the tack hooked up to the battery. So I'm gonna do a full video on exactly how I set that up, and you're gonna be if, if you've seen the short. Uh, that I had on my channel you'll understand what I'm talking about but uh and if you're from TikTok then you definitely know what I'm talking about so I don't know that was kind of a that was a very disappointing test drive <laughs> um I guess really just the fact that the belt was slipping and the axle was bent those are like the really only the two major issues because I didn't even notice the axle was that bad when I was on the driveway it's only going down the road that it's a big problem but obviously you know, I set the wheels and tires up to be roadworthy, so it kind of sucks if the axle's so bent I can't drive it on the road. But we'll get it fixed up and uh, we'll get it figured out. Well, there you go. I don't know if that's what you were expecting, but that wasn't even really the true test drive. I was kind of just looking at that as like a shakedown pass and it was it wasn't a very successful shakedown pass but that's why you do that you know you got to go out and test it out and see what happens and well i didn't like it really it's just a couple issues that we can get sorted the bent axle the belt is an easy fix we just either do an idler pulley to tighten it up or get a shorter belt here i haven't really i haven't addressed any of the issues but i had i did go ahead and look at it um and kind of realize a couple of the problems so i said the handling was kind of wonky and i know why that is so the drag link is still the original drag link i don't have heim joints see that front joint there it's just a weird solid it's like a solid ball joint that's actually welded or no it's a bolt welded to the end of it so there's no movement to the joint and what that means is I can't even tighten it all the way. So both at the front of that drag link and the back, there is a bunch of play. Or not a bunch of play, but there's enough play that basically when I was going down the road, it all of a sudden it would want to just change direction independent of the steering wheel. And I think it was doing that the whole time, even before I did all this. I, when I was going down the road, I had the same symptoms. So that's what that is for sure. That's that drag link. Also the tire pressures. I got these tires brand new. I never even checked the tire pressure. And they're all way too high. I mean, first of all, just ride stiff as hell. But I also think them being really high was causing an exaggeration of that how wobbly that tire was, or that axle. Basically, they're at 20 PSI. So I have not driven it and tested it yet with dropping the PSI, dropping the pressures, because I have to address the belt still. 
but they were all at 20. Uh, I'm going to run them at like 8 to 10 and see how that does. Uh, and other than that, I mean, yeah, so got to get a different belt, address the bent axle, get the steering sorted, and do some other stuff as well. I mean, battery mount, fuel tank mount, there's quite a few things to do. And the rev limiter video will probably be the next video. And then after that, maybe in that same video, I don't know, maybe we'll deal with some of those other issues. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, it'll get there. I mean, I, I took it out and I drove it around today, just down the driveway. I went and I tried putting it up against the rock wall down there to do a burnout, and the belt's just not having it. It's just too loose. So, uh, yeah, I mean, mainly, really, the axle being bent is the big issue. Like, that's the one problem that you can't just do something easily to fix it it has to be really really worked on taken apart transaxle pulled apart and everything so i was thinking about getting a, a length of three quarter inch axle that was another idea i had I, you can buy it you can buy like a 40 inch length of keyed axle drop that in the transaxle weld up the sun gear to it but i don't really exactly remember how that's all set up in there so i don't know if it's possible or not but we'll see uh hey thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time